Hi, I'm Lisa Singer. I am the Senior Director Event Programming at Media Post, and this is Brand Insider BTS, where I get to pull back the curtain on some of the most influential women brand marketers today. And with me is Katia Colston, and she is the VP of E-Commerce Sales at Central Garden and Pet. Welcome, Katia. Hi, Lisa. Thanks hey. for having me. Yeah, well, I'm glad you could be here. I mean, we, we get to know each other at the summits. You've been to a couple of our events, but now um, I get to get to know you on the personal side and what, what makes you tick. So I'm really happy you were able to do this. Me too, me too. And your yeah. summits are always great, by the way. Yeah, well, you've always been a great addition to it, but um, but thank you. I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> well, I first want to start off Central Park, Central Garden and Pet. Okay, they, they're sort of a motto, and let me read it so I want to understand. So they understand that the home is central to life and has proudly nurtured happy and healthy homes for over 40 years. All right, so that says a lot, but I want to ask you personally, how do you, or what do you even consider, a, what is a happy, healthy home, and how do you nurture it? Now, that's a good question. Um, the company's motto is definitely aiming pretty high but uh <laughs> happy happy healthy home uh for me personally is i think it's all about having space um and uh, ability for everyone to feel loved and supported you know uh growing up uh it was all about getting good grades getting into that top college and then landing a dream job, having a career. So I guess I was always on a mission to prove that I didn't need to follow the traditional path of finding um, finding a, a good match, you know, or a good mate to have a secure life. I grew up in a, in a different country. Um, so I wanted to make it on my own terms with my brain and my grid. But fast forward to today, you know, and I'm still juggling. It's uh, it's it's hard trying to be there for your family, not to overdo it at work, and somehow to take care of yourself too. It is a balancing act, right? But I guess that's what many of us are trying to figure out right now, no matter the age, no matter the job. At the end of the day, making sure we're all happy and healthy and rooting for each other is what matters most. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And so when you first, when did you, let's talk about, give us a little background on you in terms of where you're from originally, and then coming here to the States. What was that, you know, what was that like for you in coming to a whole new country? I, uh, yeah, so I, um, uh, I grew up, I was born and raised in Cuba, Havana, in the late 70s, early 80s. So um, transitioning from that little young girl in Havana, you know, I've always dreamed of, of, of having a career and working, I was passionate about it. Um, but, uh, you know, looking back at my younger self, I mean, I had dreams of becoming the president, you know, and, uh, it, people would laugh at me, laugh it off, saying my best bet was to marry, you know, into such aspirations. <laughs> but um, I wanted to leave a mark. Um, and when I graduated high school, I came to United States as an exchange student and then uh, worked my way up to go to college and uh, grad school and started my career started it as, uh, within the CPG industry. Uh, my first gig was at Walmart International. It was like a stepping onto a global stage, really job uh, with my background and love for diverse <clears throat> cultures. It really came into play there. And then moving to Kellogg's and now with Central Garden and Pad, it's been really one, one heck of a ride, you know, um, for the past 20 plus years. Yeah, well, I mean, here you are, as you said, when you first, well, first even, let's go to young Katia wanting to be president, okay, and then coming here to the States and going through school, and you talked about, you know, the transition, but now you're VP of, you know, you've been part of Walmart, you've been part of, you know, like major organizations, CPG organizations, and here now VP of Central Garden and Pet. Did you ever, like, well, 
okay, maybe you're not president of the United States, but still nothing to, no, not a slouch here. You're, you're doing amazing. Was I know, we know the path in terms of the positions you held and the companies you are, but what was that, like getting started, being here? Do you feel like, especially coming here with into the States with that kind of um, fire under you, did you, how did you push yourself to get to this position? Well, I think, um, sometimes you know people uh, people misjudge uh people all the time right but but um i've made my way through some pretty tough guy dominated fields you know at the beginning of my career especially but was what, what really drives me is opening doors you know for others as i go through my journey and it wasn't just about being the solo girl in those, you know, diff difficult and different uh, boardrooms, but it was bigger than that. You know, it was all about shaking up um, the old tales about what women can and cannot do. Um, in the beginning of my career, I traveled a lot to Asia, uh, so I would sit in the rooms with. Uh, top executives in Japan and China and would be the only female in the room. And it was about um, gaining, you know, the respect and and uh, building your brand, you know, as a woman. Uh, and what I found very important is to make sure you bring other women along, you know, along that journey. So Right now, I'm heading up the Women in Leadership Mentorship Committee at Central, and that's been my passion project for the past couple of years. Uh, it's not only about proving naysayers wrong, but it's about crafting a space where anyone, you know, guy or gal, can see a bit of themselves in the leaders of tomorrow. And um, we, um, I think it plays well. Uh, within the culture of Central in general, you know, and I'm proud for the work that we're doing. Yeah, no, you should be. I mean, I love that you want to, even though you didn't necessarily have those resources initially starting out, because as you mentioned, I mean, especially the CPG industry used to be predominantly male dominated. Yeah. And, um, and now, uh, you know, and it's proof at our summits, I see so many senior level women like yourself in the senior positions and it's it's awesome. It's really a great thing to see. But you've had to deal with a lot of those struggles since you've been going forward. But I love that you're now you're wanting to help others. Like because I think it's a lot. You want to look to see what people can become. You know, if you never see someone who looks like you, then you don't necessarily feel like you can. You know, when you're just starting out, then that's maybe not an opportunity for you. So is that something you're seeing to show? I mean, obviously you are there. They can look at you, they can, you know, they can, you can be a representative for any woman starting out, any young woman, but mm -hmm. also just how do you guide them? Like what is someone just starting out who isn't maybe able to be part of your mentor program? What do you say to that person in terms of getting through to become someone like yourself in a position like yourself? Yes, that's a, uh, that's a question I continue to ask myself to, in order to, to, to help others, but to women, to young women, you know, embarking on their careers, believe in your potential, number one, and seek, actively seek out mentors who can guide you through different complexities of the professional world, you know, and it could be, it does not have to be a full-time mentor, you know, but it could be relationships that are um that that are developed you know throughout your career while working on certain projects but your unique voice and perspective are invaluable and especially in environments that may not readily acknowledge them so embrace the resilience and adaptability really as your core strength uh, complementing the skills and the knowledge um, early in my career, I've underestimated the importance of networking and building relationships. Um, these connections can really open doors and provide support in, in unexpected ways. So in today's landscape, and I consider it to be really competitive and, and challenging for, for us, 
for everyone, but especially young women, it's really crucial not only to focus on achieving all the professional success, but also to maintain that empathy, you know, and understanding towards others. Um, the obstacles will always be there, you know, so we just need to learn how to grow through them. Um, as a leader, um, I what's very important for me is to listen and learn from this younger generation, you know, the, the, that is growing up and developing and, and, and finding their voice, um, just need to, you know, add to the collective strength of the team having different, uh, opinions. So, Remember, success is not just measured by what you're accomplished by the by by the impact you will have on those around you. So, yeah. um, no, I truly, I totally agree with you, and I think having that more broad set of like you know the impact is such a key way to look at it because it's what you bring to the table, how you can affect people or impact, and then that's going to look favorably upon you. Like even just starting out what you bring to the table, how you benefit your, you know, boss's life. And, and they have, then that's going to be seen and brought forward. Um, so I really do think it's all about that engagement, you know, with one another, that con connection. So in, in, especially within the CPG industry, when you talked about even the younger generations, CPG industry is all different generations. And if you're just focusing on, you know, this group of people or your mindset and not listening to that 22 year old, mm -hmm. then that's obviously, I would think going to impact just on the business side, never mind the personal side, what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and there, you know, my personal challenge and the, my biggest you no, know, um, the hardest thing I've had to overcome was moving to this country at 15, you know, alone with the dream of building a life here. But others have different challenges right now whilst being here, you know, and having been born here, um, their personal challenges are as big as, as mine was, if not bigger. So the journey really teaches us the resilience, the value of hard work, the importance of embracing ourselves, you know, and listening to others. I mean, it's these experiences that I, I hope to pass on to younger generations, but also I have a 16 year old daughter, you know, so um, it's important for me to pass those on to her, you know, showing her the strength of women leaders and the opportunities that are available, you know, in this in this country. Um, well, I mean, one, coming to a country alone with no family at 15, that's incredible. Like when you said it, I was sort of envisioning like an 18 year old, you know, going off to school, but 15, I mean, just think of it. That's your daughter a year yeah. ago I, leaving and going to another country. I mean, could you even fathom that thinking of that for your daughter? So how did you deal with that when you first came here? It's, um, no, looking back at it, it it's it's almost an uh, out of body experience, you know, that you you don't believe took place. Um, it was really about the drive that I had to get to the next stage. You know, my my in order to get through it, I had to think short term. You know, what is the next? Thing I need to do. I need to get through tomorrow. I need to get through this semester in high school you know, that I that I have to um, navigate in a different language that I thought I knew, but I learned that I'm not as fluent <laughs> when I when I first came here. I thought I was fluent in English, but I quickly learned I wasn't. So it was there were a little you know, challenges every day that you had to overcome to get to the next thing. And you really cannot get overwhelmed thinking of everything at once. Um, and again, mentorships and relationships and just seeking out the people that want to help or want to give you an advice um, and really nurturing those because 
without those people opening doors or showing me the way, I wouldn't be here. And and that's why mentoring now and being that you know, voice to others is so important to me. It it, it has this personal, you know, personal um, uh, weight. Um, Mission. Exactly. Really want to do. Well, I think that's fantastic that you do want to, because sometimes, you, you know, you hear people who they struggle and you hear others even say, because they struggled so much to get to where they are. They didn't have that mentor. They didn't have that yeah. community. They sometimes want to, you know, okay, you have to do the same thing I did. And and we've seen people like that as well. So I think that that's just so amazing that you're not thinking in that way and you're wanting to help others so they don't have to struggle the way you did. Yes. And when you think of CPGs, you know, in corporate world in general, um, most of the succession planning that is done is done on a very pretty high level, right, um, within the organization. Um, the levels that are below, you know, the the mid management, lower management, entry positions, you know, those are, are tend to be overlooked, right? When we have different succession planning, and that's where I think the opportunity is, you know, to build those succession plans, to develop the professional plan, you know, to be there for the younger or up and coming or, you know, people who just joined the organization at the very beginning of their journey and, and not just the executives uh, and their, and their succession plans. Yep. No. And it makes sense also just why not nurture these people to become amazing executives and senior level people who can continue within the organization. I totally agree. All right, well, yeah. I want to have a little fun with, um, I like to find like, okay, so Central Garden and Pet has a set of values. So um, they call it the Central Way. So yeah. I want to sort of turn these to you. All right, so one of the first values, we do the right thing. All right, so what does the right thing mean to you? Is it the perfect thing? Is it the thing that gets you to from point A to point B? Is it, is, is it something in between? Like, what does it mean to you to do the right thing? <laughs> um, God, um, I think on both personal and professional levels, uh, doing the right thing means acting with integrity, not just when it's easy uh, and fun, but especially when it's hard, you know, it's... Um, about making decisions that reflect both personal and organizational values, you know, um, recognizing right from wrong and and picking the right, you know, um, do everything as if you were um, if you were doing it in public. Do everything as if you were doing it in front of your children or your parents. You know, have that sense of honor. Yeah, or how you'd want it to be done to you. So it's not, it's not necessarily a means to an end. So you do whatever in order to get this, you know, mm -hmm. make this amount of sales or whatever it may be, or mm -hmm. in outside, you know, some in another situation. But you do what's actually what you consider you can feel good about doing, even if it means you don't get what you are seeking. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah. Being a salesperson, it is sometimes hard to do. <laughs> Oh, but, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, you have to keep that in mind. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. All right. So now one of the next ones, we strive to be the best. All right. So what do you strive to be the best at? I mean, maybe it's even something new that you've just started doing and you're really trying. Maybe you're not quite there yet, or maybe it's something that is an ongoing thing for you. But what do you strive to be the best for at? That is actually a tricky one because I I think I strive to be the best leader for my team mostly. And that means fostering an environment of growth and innovation, which may not yet be the best, you know. So while perfection is an ideal, uh, I think progress and impact are what truly matter. Um, as long as we continue to move towards the right 
goal, as long as we are improving, as long as we're trying to do better, you know, and grow and innovate. And I think that's doing our best. You know, it may not be um, the best right away, but I think the progress is what right. matters. Right. Well, all right. Now I want to put it to you on the personal side. Something has nothing to do with work. Maybe something you for you know you want to run the uh, marathon or like I don't know whatever it may be. Something that maybe you're trying to do for fun for at home, learn to cook, do whatever. What do you strive to do the best? I am striving to do better with organization, <laughs> personal. <laughs> personal organization professionally i'm really good on filing at categorizing at you know um at organizing different projects and timelines and um but personally i i still have a hard time letting things go um i have a hard time you know organizing uh things around the house you know getting my 16 year old to do the same so that's my that's my goal for this year you know part of part of my um list of goals is to get better there all right well i'm going to ask you just one more of these and it's we are passionate okay mm -hmm. what are you most passionate about and let's keep it on the personal side <laughs> Um, very passionate about family and um, legacy, legacy and uh, wisdom of um, of our elders, really. Um, and it's it's something that that I think you know our culture needs more of is the the respect and. Um, and 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 to listen to the wisdom of the older generations uh we often believe that younger uh, means better you know and 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 the uh, young generation knows better and will take us to the next big thing but but i think it it's so important to listen to our you know moms and dads and grandfathers and grandmothers and um my mom is 82 I started recording um, different conversations I'm having with her, asking her questions, you know, just preserving that that history. Um, I think it's important. I think that's what will make us stronger and more ready for the future, um, whether it's in personal life, you know, or in professional life. But we need to learn from the generations that came before us. Yeah. And I think, I mean, just given, just from our conversation, it's being wanting to learn from all generations, you know, not only yes. the ones before us, but the ones that are coming in the younger generations. And then hopefully they find some interest in our generation, you know? So it's just, yeah. it's basically, it's just that it, being open-minded to everyone, because I think, as you said, you can learn a lot from each um, individual and each different outlook. Yeah. Yes, unfortunately, time is of essence with the older ones. So um, that is, um, yeah, that on a personal, on a personal level, that's that's something I want to make sure and um, take advantage of while they're still around. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. I think that's really wonderful what you're doing with your mom. So that's really you should write it down make a little blog or you know share it after you know like at some point when you have a lot of info or whatever mm -hmm. it may be but because I think people will find value in it you know I do I do think that hearing what people are going through which is part of what I love about this show is just mm -hmm. that hearing what people like yourself and how you got to where you are you all have different stories and you you know it's not one that's the same path and so mm -hmm. I love hearing these stories and and I think everyone who watches can learn from it as well. So uh, I think that's really a wonderful thing you're doing with your mom. Well, so, I think it's wonderful what you're doing with this show. Um, <laughs> I, I do hope you, you get to uh, do more of it and you probably need need, need uh, more times, uh, more, more hours in the day 
to get all the people you'd like to talk to. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, it's everyone. There seems to be no limit in amazing women and brand marketers specifically for mm -hmm. me to talk with. So I really appreciate that with you, but all right, I want to go on. We can, we can congratulate ourselves a lot here, but <laughs> let's go on to the next. I want to hear let's on the other side of it, a failure. So we've been talking about what we're doing. Great. So was there a failure in your past or and that it kind of redirected you like it might have seemed not so you know maybe horrible at the moment but then it redirected you to a better path mm. a different path that worked out right not the one that failed <laughs> miserably <laughs> um I think um you know the, the the an example of language comes to mind, and it's uh it's the one you can um kind of double click on. But um, learning for me, learning a foreign language, thinking that I um have mastered it because I was learning it for ten years prior to coming to this country, and then coming to this country and learning that. Oh no! This was British English, and this is America, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it is not the same. And I am not fluent, like I mentioned already. Um, it was a failure. It was a failure because I did not give myself any. Um, I wasn't planning on having to, uh, get better in that area, right? So when I came here, um, I had no time or means to really get better at English. I had to go head first with all the subjects and you know finish the high school curriculum and go into college. And nobody really cared whether I knew English or not. You know, <laughs> I needed to um uh, to move on. So I had to find time. I had to to be flexible, I had to give myself grace, you know, to um, be okay that I wasn't as as perfect as I thought I was, and to plan um, to be flexible, basically to adapt, you know, and to uh, to be okay slowing down. Right. And maybe not achieving certain things at the times that I thought I would be achieving them. Ultimately, I think it taught me how important it is to um, not be too set in your ways, not be too uh, devastated if things do not go uh, according to plan and find, you know, find uh, opportunities or silver lining in, 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 in the challenges that can come uh your way yeah well and actually it sort of sets you up for being a incredible marketer because <laughs> as a marketer you nothing ever goes exactly as planned you constantly have to pivot and adjust and adapt and so i mean that's the word of the day half the time at any of our summits you know so <laughs> i feel like then just being able to figure that out personally i'm sure helped you professionally as well well to final question I want to ask I want to have it just be something real light in the sense of what's your guilty pleasure so not about work just something you to yourself that maybe you know it's binging on shows or a uh, certain ice cream or whatever it may be that it's just like okay that's that's what I want to I need this today it's been a bad day or whatever I need this it's going to be very boring. <laughs> the <laughs> answer will not be exciting. Um, I think uh, I'm I'm a, a, a creature of um, um, of senses. So I like things. Um, I like soft things, sadden things. You know, things that are that are pleasant to touch. So my guilty pleasure would be. Um, putting nice soft pajamas on and, uh, and yes, and being able to, um, eat something that's delicious, you know, and in my, I'm, I'm, I'm a sugar junkie. So anything chocolate, anything, mm -hmm. you know, any, any dessert <laughs> would do. Um, but yeah. it's, yes, it's, it's, it's those kind of, um, 
yeah, um, <laughs> guilty <laughs> pleasures, but necessary, really. I think to balance to balance everything else in our life, we need to to be able to give ourselves those. Yeah. No. Well, I think that is a perfectly um, wonderful guilty pleasure. Every no one can judge guilty pleasures because what makes you feel good and cozy or whatever it may be, that's it's strictly personal and vice mm -hmm. versa for me and anyone else. So thank you, Kata. I Tati, I really appreciate you doing this with me and sharing all that. So I thank you. Well, thank you, Lisa. Thanks for the time. And again, uh, appreciate giving me an opportunity to talk to you again. Yeah, well, we're, I was definitely glad to. And thank you for watching. And as I always ask, if you have a fabulous woman brand marketer that you would love to sort of pull back the curtain on, please let me know and I will do my best to get her. Anyway, thank you again. And thanks for what. Thanks. Thank you, Katya. Thanks, Lisa.